in good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on in good shape. We've got an expert on allergies and the latest treatments as our guest, Dr. Philip Stock. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Dr. Stock, some people seem to be allergic to almost everything. Others are allergic to nothing at all. Is it mainly a genetic predisposition or is it due to environmental factors that we develop an allergy? In fact, we know now that there is a very strong genetic influence in the development of allergies. Actually, that's the highest risk factor of developing an allergy if you have allergic siblings or allergic parents. We know today also that there is also environmental factors that really lead to the um, to the happening of those allergic symptoms then. Mm -hmm. So it's both, really. It's can, both. can anyone develop an allergy at any time? In principle, yes. It's more, more common for children to develop allergies and then to start off with a so-called allergic march. But in principle, yes, even adults, um, grown-ups, can develop allergies at any time, mm -hmm. yes. Allergic march meaning that the allergy changes? You might start with one and then there'll be more? Or what exactly, does... that's mm -hmm. what we understand with the allergic march. Usually small children start with skin symptoms, atopic dermatitis, and then this develops into um, hay fever or asthma. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess the way is to treat that early, but let's take one step back. Say you said it runs in the family, so say both parents are allergic. Is there anything you can do to prevent allergies? That's many viewers have asked that question, like Vincent Scott from Australia. So prevention, is it possible? The best thing you can do if you have, if you have a child is breastfeeding, because we have very good um, data these days that breastfeeding really protects from the de from the development of allergic diseases. It's best to breastfeed for four to six months. If not possible, there are specialized milk um, formulas for those children. Another thing that you can definitely do is to prevent smoking in the household because we know that if there's tobacco smoke in the household, that increases also the risk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no smoking and breastfeeding. That's true. Um, what about, you know, if you suspect you might have an allergy, when should you go and see a doctor about it? Well, the typical symptoms um, are different depending on the age of the patient. Of course, as I said, in children, it's mainly the skin that reacts, atopic dermatitis, red rashes, maybe in response to certain food products. But then at later stages, the typical symptoms of hay fever, runny nose, itchy, runny eyes, um, and then maybe sometimes even trouble breathing when you do exercise, what we call asthma. Mm -hmm. So uh, if these symptoms occur, what sort of tests should you ask your doctor to perform? Well, the first thing is to go to a specialist and then the specialist will be the right one to ask the correct questions because that's the most important thing to really ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. Once those questions have been asked, then of course there's a couple of pretty simple tests that can be done like a skin prick test on the forearm or on the back of your, um, of your back or um, blood drawings to really find out what specific molecule you're reacting to. Mm -hmm. What kind of allergies you really exactly. have. Okay. Exactly. Hypersensitization is a very effective method. Many viewers have written in to ask about that. Like Clau Claudia Ramos from Chile, she wanted to know who can and should try that method. What you say is absolutely right. The hyposensitization is the most effective form of therapy that we have. And actually, it's the only form of real therapy, curing, basically, or trying to, to address the, 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 the allergy itself and not only the symptoms. And um, the success rate is, we estimate, about 80%. But it depends, of course, on which type of allergy you're treating. It works best for the pollen allergies and for the house dust mite allergies and for the insects. Unfortunately, it does not work as well for the pets and it does not work at all for the food allergies. Mm -hmm. So again, not for all kinds of allergies. And what if you have one of those kinds? If you have a pet allergy, what, which other therapies are most effective from your experience? Well, the most effective therapy in that case is to eliminate the exposure with this allergen, so to get rid, basically, of this pet. Mm -hmm. And if that is not possible, as in the, in the case of some other pollens or so, then there is some very good pharmaceutical products, medication, basically, like antihistamines or steroids, cortisone, that are very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. 
You mentioned cortisone. What about side effects when it comes to cortisone? I know many people are very um, curious about those side effects. And in fact, cortisone is a drug that you need to be careful with if you give it for a long period of time, several weeks, through the circulation of the body. Then you need to be careful. But this is absolutely not what we do in allergy patients. In allergy patients, we treat those people with topical steroids. So in skin problems, with ointments, with nasal symptoms like hay fever, with um, um, nasal spray, or with inhalation de devices in asthma. So that's totally harmless. Risk-free. Absolutely risk-free. Okay. Um, what if uh, you have an allergy that might not bother you that much, like a mild form of pollen allergy. Do you have to get treatment in any case? In general, no. If it's a very mild form, then you don't necessarily have to get treatment. It's a little bit different in smaller children where we believe that there is something we call the allergic march, that you develop allergies over time that add up to each other. In, this, in those small children, then we would definitely be very early in the recommendation to perform a hyposensitization, even if the symptoms are not that strong. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems that more and more people that do have allergies globally even. Is that really the case? And, and if so, why? In fact, that is the case. Um, and we don't understand it completely, but it's mainly in industrialized countries. So what we believe is a so-called hygiene hypothesis. So maybe we are in industrialized countries too clean, actually, and our immune system is not being trained as much as it should be. Mm -hmm. So it looks for other enemies. Wow. That's right. So let your children play in the mud, maybe can be That's true, actually. <laughs> yes. Advice. yes. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for being My our pleasure. guest. My pleasure. Thank you.